On today's episode, the third generation 4680 is coming, there are fish in this frunk, and Tesla supercharging is ready to take on anything that the world can throw at it. Beginning with Tesla's 4680 battery cell, which according to a new report from The Information, will be splitting into four new variants with the introduction of the new dry cathode manufacturing process, and each of the four will have a different specialized battery chemistry designed for specific use cases. Now, let's recap some recent history for a second. We had the original 4680 Gen 1 cell that launched in 2022 with the extremely limited Model Y standard range rear-wheel drive from Giga Texas. Then, Tesla upgraded to the 4680 Gen 2 for Cybertruck production in 2023, which is why that battery is often referred to as the Cybercell. And now, in the summer of 2024, we have learned that Tesla has begun production on a third-generation 4680 using their dry cathode process, but all that they will really tell us is that they have built one Cybertruck with the new dry cathode cells, and that there was a plan to mass-produce the new batteries by the end of the year. This new report by The Information cites anonymous sources inside Tesla's battery operations and gives us a new picture of what's been going on behind the scenes. So, first off, the article says that Tesla is still pretty far from mastering the dry cathode battery process, claiming that between 70 and 80% of the new cathodes they make do not meet quality control and end up being recycled. Now, that's all a part of ramping up a new production line, especially one that is using a novel manufacturing technique. Apparently, Tesla is referring to the new dry cathode cell as the 4680D, which could stand for dry, but it could also stand for development. The article seems to suggest that the 4680D is only being produced at Tesla's research and development hub in Fremont, California, and not Giga Texas. The timeline in the article suggests that the 4680D will be introduced into Cybertruck production around the middle of next year, which is a bit different from what Tesla said in July. Their earnings call seemed to suggest that dry cathode cells would be in full use for Cybertruck production by the end of this year, but it's possible we either misunderstood or the production yield has just been lower than expected so far. The article says that Tesla now hopes to achieve a 90% cathode success rate by the end of this year, and that should segue into mass production of the 4680D by the middle of 2025, which is when the new battery packs will start arriving in Cybertrucks, which Tesla expects to hit a production rate of between 2 and 3,000 units per week at that time, which is about double the current production rate. From the sounds of it, Tesla will continue running the wet cathode 4680 production line in parallel with the new 4680D production. So, if the new line is successful, there will be way more than enough 4680 cells to go around, and even if the new dry process continues to be problematic, there will still be an adequate supply of 4680s to keep the Cybertruck line rolling. Now, as for the four new 4680 cells, these are supposed to be arriving in 2026, and it's going to be an evolution of the existing battery format into some new, more specialized chemistry types. One will be called NC05 or New Cell 5, which is being called a workhorse cell that will power the Robotaxi, the Cybertruck, the Semi, and a fourth unknown vehicle. So that's very interesting because that range includes both Tesla's smallest vehicle and their largest. The best assumption would be that this is an LFP or lithium iron phosphate chemistry, meaning a slightly lower energy density with a significantly lower material cost, which makes perfect sense in the Robotaxi and this unknown vehicle, which is either the Cybervan or the cheap compact car, and it also suggests that there will be lower range, more affordable variants of both the Cybertruck and Semi in the near future. Variant 2 is the NC20. This one will have higher energy density and will be used for SUVs, Cybertrucks, and other future vehicles. That's probably more of a direct replacement for the current 2170 and 4680 cell, just with a slightly higher energy capacity, and probably a lower material cost from either reducing or eliminating the use of cobalt. Then there is NC30 and NC50. These are both ultra-high performance cells that will increase both energy density and charging speed. NC30 will be used for Cybertrucks and sedans, while NC50 is reserved for limited production performance-focused products, aka the new Roadster. So, NC30 would be an upgrade on the current 4680 and 2170 cell, probably used in the next generation Cyberbeast Model S and maybe Model 3 Performance. Then NC50 
would be a very low volume cell specifically for the Roadster. Maybe a Model S Plaid Plus if that ever comes back. It's also hinted that NC50 might even be smaller in size than 4680. Smaller battery cells are easier to cool because there's a higher ratio of external surface area to pull heat away from the internal material. That's why Tesla still uses the smallest 18650 cells in their Plaid vehicles. Anyway, that could be all total nonsense, or we could be on the verge of seeing Tesla become totally battery independent. So stay tuned. Let's talk about that final hurdle in your sales process, the security review. It's often the most dreaded part with lengthy questionnaires and endless emails between you, your security team, and your customer. It's the bottleneck that puts deals at risk and leaves dollars on the table. But what if you could cut through that back and forth and get to the finish line faster? With Vanta's questionnaire automation, you can do just that. Go-to-market teams are completing security reviews up to five times faster, which means deals are closing quicker than ever. Companies like Zoom Info, Smart Recruiters, and Noibu already trust Vanta to streamline their process and keep deals moving. So why let security reviews slow you down? See how Vanta can help by taking their self-guided product tour, no sign-up required. Just click the link in the description and discover how easy it is to take control of your sales process. All right, let's recover from the technical jargon with a story for the outdoorsman. If you've ever driven a Tesla to the fishing hole, then you'll love this one. The Frunk Fish Storage Technique. Not an endorsement, this is probably not good for the fish or your car, but I guess it's an option. Remember back in April this year when Tesla let go of its entire supercharger team in North America? It's a hard one to forget. It definitely made headlines and brought out everyone with an opinion on social media. The sky was clearly falling. Fast forward to today and Tesla's third quarter delivery results, it turns out that things aren't going as bad as many people would have believed. The Tesla charging team has announced that just in the third quarter alone, they've opened 2,800 new supercharger stalls, growing the network 23% year over year. In that same quarter, the supercharger network delivered 1.4 terawatt hours of total energy, growing 27% year over year. Max DeZager, one of the key executives in the supercharging team, who was among those laid off and then rehired soon after, he also appears to be the individual to have taken over the leadership position previously held by Rebecca Tanucci. Max commented on these results, impressed by what the hyper-focused team is pulling off. Now, if you've read the latest Walter Isaacson biography on Elon Musk, you probably already know how Elon operates his business. Delete any part of the process you can, and if you do not end up adding back at least 10% of them, then you didn't delete enough. I guess the same goes for people. It is now clear that the supercharging team is significantly smaller than before, since no large hiring spree for it has been seen, yet they continue to perform better than nearly every other player in the industry. Now we put these third quarter numbers into context with their past deployments, and found that today, we should be at over 62,369 supercharging stalls deployed at 6,800 locations worldwide. All this in almost exactly 12 years. Here's Elon announcing the supercharging network on September 24th, 2012. Okay, so we've established Tesla is clearly still running the show on supercharging, but here's another way the network excels. Actual design for humanity. With the many challenges presented by hurricanes along the East Coast this year, the supply of gasoline and diesel fuel for keeping cars and generators running has become a major concern. Either the lines are very long or the gas stations are out completely. Meanwhile, the Tesla supercharger network seems to be almost entirely available and functioning in the state of Florida without long lines. Another account of a Model 3 owner in North Carolina says they ended up having a total blackout and 99% of gas stations are closed. The ones open have massive multiple hour lines. The Tesla owner was able to use a supercharger nearby and do supply runs for friends and families and charge all their devices. We were 100% better off than gas cars in this situation, the user said. The power walls and solar panels certainly help in these times as well, and Cybertruck owners with PowerShare features should also be able to power an entire house from the battery pack, although some are currently waiting for Tesla to send a software update to connect it with solar and power walls. The timing does suck a little on that side. In a recent post, Tesla Charging also gave some pointers on charging preparations ahead of Hurricane Milton, like charging to 100% and checking the live status of supercharger availability. 
They said that pre-hurricane they are focused on uptime of superchargers, but especially interesting is that they also added, we will be focused on restoration and prepared to deploy mobile superchargers powered by mega packs where access to charging is most impacted. Mobile superchargers coupled with mega packs for storage are something we've encountered here and there over the years, and it's great to see these are ready to deploy. On a bit sunnier topic, Tesla Giga Berlin just built a 5,000 square meter solar canopy with 2,639 solar panels, totaling about one megawatt on top of a part of its factory parking lot. The chargers for EVs are located just below this, and anyone can charge their EV there for free.